Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna explain the concept of virtual displacement. This is a really important concept in the field of analytical mechanics. However, it's not very well understood. The textbooks in classical mechanics don't really explain it that well. They don't really give any analytical expression for it. Uh, so the students who use it in analytical mechanics get confused on how to deal with it in algebraic manipulations. And there are also different sorts of ambiguities in the concept of this virtual displacement. Now let's talk about the ambiguities regarding the concept of virtual displacement. In Goldstein's classical mechanics textbook, it's a classic one, everyone has it. It says that the virtual displacements are virtual, imaginary, and arbitrary. Now, these words don't have any analytical meaning to themselves. So the students who study these books actually get confused about the concept of virtual displacement because these words are not very clear in analytical sense. Now, to add more to it, Goldstein's te textbook says that uh, the virtual displacements actually satisfy the constraint equations. However, some old textbooks in classical mechanics say that virtual displacements don't really need to satisfy constraint equations of the system. But that's not the real ambiguity. The real confusion arises when you say that it's a differential like quantity but it happens in zero time so and in some books it says that uh, it's actually a displacement but in zero time now position is actually a continuous function in time so it's a bit unclear how virtual displacement which is an arbitrary change in the system coordinates in zero time and this is the actual confusion now position is actually a continuous function of time so that's a bit confusing to the students how the change of coordinates in the system will happen in zero time because in zero time a continuous function should change by zero amount so these are the some ambiguities that we have around the concept of virtual displacement. Now let me give you the definition, the analytical definition of virtual displacement here. Let's say you have the virtual displacement in coordinate QI. It is defined as the difference between two unequal allowed displacements. And by allowed displacements, I mean allowed by the constraints in the system. So, and if you have, uh, say, uh, n coordinates, so it, the i can run from 1 to n. Now, I will now explain how this definition actually resolves the ambiguities that we have discussed before. We see that this definition is very precise, so there's no amount of arbitrariness here. So... The, this is one ambiguity that is that's been dealt with and another ambiguity is this quantity is actually now a differential quantity because it's a difference between two differential quantities here now to answer the question whether these quantities actually satisfy the constraint equations of the system i'll do some algebraic manipulation say you have n holonomic constraints on the system uh, denoted by this and I should use a different index here now if you take the total derivative of it it will be just like this In the k-index, I'm using the Einstein sum summation convention. 
and I can actually run from one to say n. Now for another allowed displacement which actually satisfies this equation I can write the equation like this. Now, if I subtract 2 from 1, I get this. Now, this quantity here is actually the virtual displacement as we have defined above. So, virtual displacements actually satisfy the holonomic constraints in a very special manner where as if the constraints are frozen in time so why am I, why am i saying that because in this equation there's no time derivative term Now, what about non-holonomic constraints? For non-holonomic constraints, the stand standard equation is, which is pretty much you can find in any classical me mechanics textbook, but I'm using Goldstein as a reference here. Let's say you have m non-holonomic constraints indexed by the letter i, and you have some coordinates. I can run here from 1 to say m. Let me simplify this. Here I have used Einstein summation convention on the index k. Now for another allowed displacements in this uh, satisfying this non holonomic constraints, I have this equation. Now, if you subtract these two equations, actually you get another equation for the virtual displacements. You see, even here, you don't have time component in the equation like the like we have here so now as you can see the virtual displacements actually satisfy the holonomic and non-holonomic constraint equation but in a special way where in the non-holonomic case the time coefficients of the equations are not present and in the case of Holonomic constraints, the time derivative terms are not present here. So let's summarize what we have done here in this video. I have actually outlined some ambiguities in the concept of virtual displacement in the prevalent textbooks of classical mechanics. After that, I have given an analytical definition of virtual displacement and I have explained how this definition actually resolves those ambiguities. I hope you have understood the contents of this video, but still, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section. And if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and please share it on your social media. So until next video, goodbye.